All right, today I'm in a mode for like a little horror story to give you guys in case I have not given you enough of them. This is March 21st of 2018. What you are about to hear was actually the worst, the worst scenario, the worst, the worst thing I have ever gone through. Okay, let's just put it that way. Today, I got microwave, I got maybe, I was just, let's say, maybe four hours uh, in the bed. And after four hours, I no longer could take. Uh, my eyes started to hurt, started to spin around, and you could hear sound. It's better now than it was, uh, you know, no longer I possibly could sleep. Uh, this is just one of the four hours, four hour, not gonna say sessions because it doesn't they don't microwave you for four hours but you know it builds up in you till you no longer can possibly sleep whatever it's not bad at all it's not bad at all uh, compared to the stuff I'm about to give you an account okay now I like to get eight hours of sleep that's what I love my eight hours of sleep but you know it just didn't happen and since this was the case uh, it triggered a little memory in me you know i said to myself oh boy that's nothing really compared to the stuff you have gone through one time okay and so this is the story i'm going to give you this is the account i'm going to give you uh it did happen in 2014 during the forest uh, hospitalization to psychiatric hospital without absolutely any grounds or anything uh they came to pick me up and throw me uh, in a mental care hospital in Ljubljana already for the second time uh, I'm not gonna say it was not for any grounds it was due to political persecution that's what this was all about and that's what this case is all about they have falsely branded me with mental illness with paranoia with schizophrenia labeled me with a mental illness have ruined my life I'm not going to go into the stuff they have done because that's totally other sub subject but I'm just going to give you an account of let's say the worst three days in my life how about that the worst ever I have experienced now, there might be people out there that have experienced even worse I'm sure they did there might be some people some prisoners in uh, you know, military prisoners that were captured during some uh, military uh, operations or something like this, and they might have done something to them similar to that, but that must have been done long, long, long time ago, okay? Because these days, stuff like this, they no longer do, not even with uh, military prisoners. Okay, so we go to 2014, and I am inside of the mental hospital, just picture me inside of the mental hospital uh, with a roommate that had about 300 pounds and was about 2 meters tall, that's probably about 7 foot tall and with a 300 pounds, uh, 130 something kilos. Uh, individual rated had a special status sportsman status in slovenia okay so he enjoyed the uh, little, little privileges uh, he had a gym uh, and stuff like this uh, it was really really built strong he would go and weight uh, lift weight and so on uh, and it was inside of my room uh, this individual how can I say, uh, I'm really, really good with the people. I know how to approach people and, uh, you know, relate to them. And for that reason, uh, I'm well accepted around people. This individual accepted me well. Uh, we, we became, from the beginning, was quite... Uh, not very friendly atmosphere but he accepted me okay there's only one thing that I gotta say the only thing that I had bad thing I would say about this individual he was very sensitive to a light 
to a light. And it was a medications that this psychiatrist, Zoran Muja, who was involved in my case in MK Ultra, all along, all along, this was the individual psychiatrist from Ljubljana, Zoran Muja, who was involved in my case all along, uh, have uh, prescribed to this individual. I mean, if, if I would... In the evening time, when you had like a little tiny, little, like a little tiny light next to your bed, you turn that thing on, that individual would just go totally off. I mean, he would start to behave very aggressively. I mean, he would like step next to my bed, and I imagine this guy, this big ass guy, going uh, and just. Uh, you know, grab the, uh, you know, uh, you know, and, you know, complain about that, how it hurts him, that, that is horrific, that it hurts him, the light, the light, the light. And so I said, no, no problem. I said, just turn it off, you know, that's, that's okay. I'm going to, or I'm going to turn it off for you, you know. And so he did a few times like this, quite threatening also, you know. Um, what we didn't know, okay anybody in that department because this was this already was open department i was transferred from closed department to the open up department after i don't know uh, that's again that's another area of abuse they have totally violated you know all the laws and codes ethics anything possibly anyone can can violate i was at one time the, during the first hospitalization they had me I think for like eight months on the closed department that you know people get in and out within like week or two uh, but these people had me for like eight months and no employee could possibly understand why and this and that so never mind this was already in the open department and what nobody knew that open department where even the people like alcoholics or people with a drug problems they can check in and they can get assistance in there uh, if they need one they can you can they can just check in and stay there for as long as they want and then they leave whatever okay uh, in that, what we didn't know that closed department was, I don't know, I don't know, no slightest clue about it, is that this individual actually cut his own mama and have placed her parts inside of the fridge. So, man, that was like a, a little alarming button, okay, when you, when you, when you consider this, you know, the, the, the guy big as this, you know, uh, such a strong guy and uh, you know being your roommate obviously individual should be uh, in you know locked in a in a forensic department you know not not in a department like with the people like myself and other people and he he became my roommate okay now this is Oren Muja had a uh, lots of problems with me he tried to create uh, you know all kinds of uh, incidents and all kinds of conflicts you know uh, was just really unsuccessful at doing it and for the most part he came out ridiculous I mean people started to laugh at him and, and doubt him whenever he would try to doubt me uh, in these open sessions wherever we would congregate wherever we would meet to discuss whatever was happening you know in in in, in, in the hospital, you know, in that department, let's say, on that floor, let's say. Well, what I gotta say is that if those were medications at all, if those are psychiatric medications at all, or I should say if there was not something else that was added to this so-called psychiatric medications, because in the first hospitalizations, they would give me a Leponex that caused me barely move I could not move jaws I could not talk I could not even I could barely walk I would have pain tremendous pain in my chest if if I would sleep on the side where heart is located therefore on the left side I believe that uh, I would my heart would just explode from the pain sorry I was running down my uh, 
malls and stuff like that uh, nobody understood really what was happening not even these people who were coming back for many years they have not seen anything like this and so that's why I believe that already from the first in the first hospitalization I don't believe those are actually psychiatric drugs I believe that there was something else that was added to whatever was given to me during the second hospitalization pretty much the same thing there were different drugs that were used however these drugs were I'm not really precisely sure why they would give me some kind of pain reliever uh, now they would give me a special drug that is also very dangerous drug uh, a drug that can become you can get addicted to and become uh, dependent on for your entire life and because according to psychiatrists because the drugs that were prescribed to me cause tremendous pain in one okay now they're giving me I don't know two or three different drugs whatever that was and also they would give me some sort of a reliever uh, for the side effects of these drugs I don't know one was Abilify and then there was another drug I don't even know what it was I can't remind myself honestly I'm trying to leave this uh, experience behind and uh, in a little bit you will understand why okay so this whatever drugs this were and I believe again there was something else in it uh, it took me a while uh, to for my body to somehow get adjusted to them without that type of pain reliever okay so that was some kind of a drug uh, which I also know the name but I have to go online to get it and I'm not gonna do this right now I'm doing this video quickly this morning because because I got like a little you know problem with this microwave and whatever so I don't want this to let the waste I want to use even this I want to use this to you know to give people an idea about psychiatry let's say okay so my body somehow got used to that and they started to cut that uh, you know that drug uh, pain relieving drug um, yeah after like I think it was about six months five months six months uh, there was that first weekend that came I think it was in a closed department like four months or something like that or five months and then it was time for me to go on that first weekend's home okay and so you probably can imagine that it wasn't pleasant to stay so long inside of that hospital watching other people how they would go home and come back and so on and you're always inside in there uh, under extremely painful circumstances again this, this drugs uh, I'm gonna put it this way if this drugs would not allow me to be like I am right now like you know just the way you see me right now uh, they would not allow me to do that what those drugs would do is they would they would have me like this act me all the time you would have to move all the time because the pain you know the pain was produced by the drugs inside of the body was very bad pain and if I would not move uh, the pain would just become excruciating okay so the biggest deal for me was to get some sleep and with the help of those drugs and they had also another drugs that would allow you to get some rest sleep they would give me uh, I could actually get some sleep right they would you know I could get a few hours of sleep whatever and uh, just go on with that okay so uh, it was very bad uh, most of the time you could see me in a hospital would be walk back and forth you could you would see me in a hospital just going back and forth back and forth back and forth because whenever I would stop uh, it would become my body would become extremely painful I would just uh, I would just have like pain everywhere everywhere in me it would just become painful and you know it would you would start to shake you know you would start to shake 
and so you had to just all the time you had to move uh, so funny because you know they, they were suggesting to me why are you all the time jumping you know you were jumping I was doing like this all the time I was jumping like this because I had so much pain in me because pain was so damn excruciating like I said I believe those were not psychiatric drugs I believe there was something horrific added inside of those drugs now this Zoran Muja is half Slovenian and half Serbian I believe this individual would have access to some sort of military uh, chemical arsenal knowledge of uh, you know all kinds of substances that possibly could be used to torture people I believe I believe that he does have uh, this individual was involved in MK Ultra in my case from very beginning and he was a very violent individual uh, he presented me with most horrific possible scenarios to traumatize me uh, you know as much as possible what was later, uh, used on a later stage uh, you know for totally other purposes as I'm about to explain one of the scenarios this Dr. Muja used was right here inside of the garage would have me hold axe in my hands inside of the garage uh, and would have local police from Novo Mesto they were they were next to him and they were filming they were taking pictures filming whatever the hell they were doing and he didn't mind to gesture me he didn't mind to suggest me uh, on how I have just murdered my family and I said what are you talking about I didn't murder anybody you know and he said it doesn't matter if you did or not you have an axe in your hands and so they had me in the garage and they would take pictures make film of me and this and that and as I would drop the axe and would not want to cooperate uh, they would just violently tell me uh, you hold this axe now okay you stand here you stand here grab him you know stand here you stay here you stay and what they would do is they would use they would compel me to stand on my feet for like extended periods of time they would use this also on in attic area the same type of approach whenever they were doing this was Zoran Muja who did this shit and so I didn't know what what the hell he was talking about that you know that I When you're traumatized like this, the only thing you try to do is you try to push the memories like this. Anyways, you go back to the United States, you don't have to worry about it because after each MK Ultra session, what they do is they use electric convulsive ECT uh, to clear your brain. They give you electroshocks and they you don't know anymore anything about what went on. They clear your brain. And after a while, your brain start to get back again, and the only thing you get is very unpleasant memories, which you're just trying to push away, forget about, and move on with your life. That's all you're trying to do. You're trying to escape, avoid these people. But you really can't avoid them. You can't avoid the government when they put your social security number inside of your computer, and no job any longer is available to you. There's no way to avoid them. You can go like I did on two continents in 10 countries to apply for political asylum, but you can't get away with them. You can't get away from them. A global neo-Nazi plan involves major superpowers, uh, signatures of major superpowers, and that basically guarantees that you have no place to go. Not even one single country could possibly cover your ass because you have no place to go uh, even if anybody would offer you any kind of protection or anything like this uh, that country that system would be accountant you know uh, accountable to uh, to a bigger systems okay and you know all the systems you know so in some form some way they are connected to one another this is my case okay so now I'm in back in the hospital in 2014, okay? MK Ultra scenario that I have talked about, this was in 2005, 2006, sometimes like this. 
back 2014 back inside of that psychiatric hospital uh, in that next to that roommate whatever uh, that I have talked to you about how he chopped his mom and placed her inside of the fridge the first week it comes and uh, after five six months this Dr. Mu just says all right you can go home now for the weekend and I'm not really sure it might have been actually even Thursday that it was it might have been like this I'm not really I'm not precisely sure about it uh, but it was in the morning hours when my mom and dad came to pick me up and uh, now there was another medication uh, but that was not really medication that's just a side effect reliever okay what I was talking previously to you about were two other things one was a drug that you can get addicted to and that can be only used in the field in the medical profession field only for so long and no longer than that because individual can become totally dependent on one for the rest of his life uh, that was the uh, drug that was used to release the pain to gradually get me on into this in a parenthesis drugs was removed uh, and then there was another one that allowed me to get some you know rest at nights uh, if I wouldn't be capable to sleep because of the pain because of excruciating pain of those in a parenthesis drugs and then there was this akinetone it's known as akinetone akinetone is a side effect reliever uh, which about which I also knew nothing about really uh, when they uh, the only thing in my interest was because there was nothing else than me being maliciously branded as paranoid schizophrenic there is not even any kind of percentage in me that would have anything to do with mental illness of any kind due to political reasons due to me being politically involved however it was in the best interest of these people to get me killed at all costs because this is when they take away from your career when they pronounce you as mentally ill and they take away from your career which you're you know somehow you know trying to put things together after all the stuff I have talked about they have done to me but you don't actually have anything else left than to put the rope around your neck really okay so this is their goal their main number one agenda was basically to get me murdered maybe compel me into a suicide this was the number one priority for them okay so my main concern were, were these drugs what I tried to do is I tried to reduce these drugs these psychiatric drugs to a minimum as much as possible obviously these drugs are also bad for your brain okay if suffering excruciating pain in a body is not enough uh, you can trust me uh, these drugs will do it okay uh, the pain in your body will do it and so I knew really nothing about and I really cared nothing about okay the only good news that was good for me was if they have lowered uh, the amount of drugs in me and sometimes it gradually they start with a very high dosage and then they go lower and lower and lower and when this psychiatrist mentioned that I might not even have to take this side effect relieving drug known as akinetone it's not a drug again it's a side reliever uh, it made me feel good it made me feel like yeah I said sure thank you so much you know I don't have to take this now that's very good whatever you know so we went home with my parents that morning and my father took like a little longer route home and we went to an idyllic place on the river where Timon uh, it's actually from the same family of fish like Timon is Timon is in Mongolia and um, in some parts of Russia and so on and it's a beautiful big ass salmon salmonid uh, type of fish uh, a little bit related to a trout if you imagine like a big 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 like 
they grow like meter and so on and more beautiful fish and uh, this fish it was a type of the season when this fish mate and you could you could see them even digging holes in the in the riverbank which is really impressive beautiful fish to see okay we haven't seen any fish but what matters is that at that point in time uh, when we got there and it's probably about an hour from Ljubljana to get to that spot. Um, I was already having uh, very serious issues, uh, pain f with the pain. You know, um, pain. Pain was how can I say? Pain was like you could feel the entire body that was in pain. Pain was like very difficult for me to sit inside of the car because when you're inside of the car you have to be still and as I have explained most of the time when I was in that psychiatric hospital I would just go walk back and forth walk back and forth uh, or you know I would just shake you know I, I remember oftentimes this this psychiatrist saying to me why you know actually he dared to even suggest me that it is not normal to shake. And I tried to please this maniac, Dr. Doran Muja, against whom I'm going to request uh, a criminal case. I, uh, I tried to please the maniac by not even moving, being still, even that inside of me, because of the psychiatric drugs, pain was totally excruciating you know I'm just understanding how mentally sick this individual is and we're talking about a psychopath we're talking about the maniac here who have deliberately torture physically torture to the degree that I will talk about in this very video Dr. Zoran Mudra in one of these following days you're gonna get a police invitation you're gonna get a court invitation I'm gonna get you to the court and uh, believe me, I'm going to run you over. This is the, this is a promise for me. This this maniac, this psychopath with a psychiatric degree, with degree in psychiatry, and I believe, like I said, that he was much much more than just that. Uh, this individual. Beside all the other stuff that I have talked about, you know, suggested me that it's okay, you know, to go home without that uh, side effect reliever that weekend. The longest weekend in my life, the most horrific weekend too in my life. And so, you know, we went home, huh? and this this pain without that side effect reliever was just becoming more and more and more excruciating and it became so excruciating that uh, i felt that my parts my interior parts my interior body parts like kidneys and everything else is going to fall apart uh my veins uh it felt like you know something is going like you know everywhere and the pain was totally excruciating that's why i have a sincere doubts that those actually were really psychiatric drugs i am not really sure if those really were psychiatric drugs and it was not actually something else that was inside of those psychiatric drugs uh, it would be really good to know a military expertise uh, of this individual uh, what precisely what kind of branch this indi individual was and what kind of uh, uh, what is he familiarized with uh, you know as I said he was involved in MK Ultra case against me in in a field of the military because uh, you know the pain was becoming so excruciating that that very same day I told my mother to take me to American Embassy to Ljubljana since I'm a US citizen so they can take me out of the country uh, because you know that I'm gonna die simple as this I was ready to die my mom didn't want to do this but sometimes at four or five o'clock something like this afternoon uh, I no longer could handle and they had to put me in the car 
and I told him, what do you take me? What do you take me to Ljubljana? Or I'm just gonna go, you know, on the bus. I said, train, don't worry, mom. I'm gonna walk to the city, get in the train, bus, whatever it is, go to Ljubljana, go to that embassy, get on a plane and get out of the country because the pain, uh, it is totally impossible to describe one. You cannot possibly imagine what kind of pain the hell this was. And this went on already for, huh. uh, my, in my estimation, about seven, eight hours went on that thing. And so they take me to Ljubljana. I go to this embassy and U.S. Embassy rejects me. They don't want to assist me in any way. They don't want to help me do nothing. They slam the door in front of me. Uh, they disallow me to any kind of assistance, anything. I'm now pretty much left to myself, to my own. I tried to go to the Swiss embassy right next to it, and then there's a German embassy in that same area begging to help me. Somebody help me out. Get out of this shithole. Slovenian shithole. Nobody helps anything. So we go home. And so on the way home, I had my mom called the hospital. I call hospital and I ask them if it's possible that I could get the drugs. If I could get this drug that this Dr. Muja uh, just uh, suggested me not to take one. That it is okay, that I don't need one. And, you know, the nurse said to me, all the doctors left already for the weekend. Uh, they come back on Monday. Never mind, we go home. Uh, I'm already having a thoughts and I'm saying in the drive home, I'm saying to my mom, I said, Mom, I said, why don't you just, uh, why don't you just drop me by the hospital and, you know, leave me there, whatever. No, because you're going to get better. It's going to get better. Don't worry. It's going to get better. This is nothing. It's going to get better. All right. Nothing did get better. Uh, that same night I got maybe... I have no idea, maybe two, three hours of sleep. I couldn't sleep. I could not sleep no matter what the hell I would do because of the pain. You don't understand. The pain, the pain is like, this would be the pain I would actually, if I wanted to torture somebody like through the military, that's why I'm talking about the military. If I would subject that individual to like extreme torture, you know, that I would want to get the information from you, you know, and I would use like an extreme torture method, that is precisely the type of agent I would use on you because you would talk no matter what. Uh, painful, impossible uh, to describe. The next day, I could walk with my mom, maybe I did 500 meters or something like this. And I was like, a, you're like a 110 year old man, not 100, but 110. You have zero energy in you. Even the smallest obstacle is the biggest obstacle. Okay. Uh, and my mom pushed me because she said, and thanks God she did. Okay. That this is what's going to help me, this and that. Now, if I would stop taking that, those drugs, in a parenthesis, drugs, like I said, if there wasn't something else in it, uh, what would happen when I would be transferred back to the hospital, it would go everything even into a worse stage as they would have to introduce me to, reintroduce me to some other drugs and so on and so forth. You have no idea how that is. Uh, once you stop taking a certain medication, uh, the psychiatrist uh, claimed that uh, you need to take another kind of medication and so on and so forth. Uh, so uh, this is like a, a thriller of insanity. I, due to pain, I bore a delirium. I, I thought that my interior organs are going to fall apart. And a memory kicked in on MK Ultra, on the Dr. Zoran Muja. Now, I knew who the Zoran Muja was at the time, but I had no place, I had no way to tell anything about anyone, because Tatiana Proxel here from Novo Mesto suggested me that 
if I even mention MK Ultra or something like this, the ambulance vehicle is going to come to pick me up. So this is how the psychiatrists were, and you had no place to complain, you have nothing to do, and they pretty much were doing the stuff like this with me. Saturday, um, again, a pain was totally excruciating. There was oil that would drip down from my forehead. It was not water, it was actually oil. And I know so because uh, I'll explain to you in continuation. Uh, now, I, uh, in respect to MK Ultra, the only thing I started to fear was that Slovenian police, local Novomesto police, who did this shit to me with the psychiatrist, could orchestrate it a very, very serious uh, problem for me for my family. Uh, in other words, because of the individual I was placed with inside in the same room, uh, and because of the violent MK Ultra scenario, I started to suppose that they could use this type of circumstances, because the pain was so excruciating, uh, to actually come inside of the house, murder my family, and then point at me on how the hell I did it. So it wasn't that I would be afraid of me, but I started to fear that local novel master police could actually do shit like this. And so you know what? I demanded for my mom to take me back to the mental hospital in Ljubljana no matter what. My mom would not do this. Believe me, I was in the worst pain and in the worst fear in my lifetime for the three days, for the next following day, Sunday, that was left. Uh, it was not the Monday I came, as I should, but it was the sister that drove me that very same evening. I remember now everything. Back to Ljubljana Hospital, uh, where I arrived at about, I'm not sure, maybe it was like 7 o'clock or something like this, uh, the pain became, I'm going to say, so severe that I could not even walk anymore. Now you had the issue that I no longer could even walk. Uh, I could not make the bed, you understand? I could not make the bed myself. I had much older man who was there, uh, helping me. Actually, this individual was handicapped. He, he did not even have a hand. Uh, he lost his hand. And he was the one who made the bed for me, which made me so, so... made me feel so bad inside of me that an older man without actually hand had to make the bed for me. This is how excruciating the pain was. And you remember when I mentioned the oil? that was dripping down my forehead, it was oil. That's why, again, I wonder and I would love to know what is it precisely that causes from your scalp uh, literally oil to drip out. Uh, usually that would be like uh, water, uh, you know, drops of your sweat or something like that. But I had oil dripping down my forehead. And the nurse said, uh, no, that cannot be, because she saw me that I was just, it was just dripping down on me. It was just coming out of my head. She said, that cannot be uh, oil, she said. I said, well, I said, how cannot be if, you know, I went like this and I said, this is oil. You can feel that this thing is oil. It's a oil. Okay, so that's why I remember about the oil thing. Um, folks, um, this was the most horrendous, the most horrific case in my life, the most horrific weekend, the most painful, horrific weekend I went through in my life. This was three days that I went like this. Obviously, I came on Sunday uh, because no longer I could 
manage the pain till Monday. And guess what? When I came to the hospital, do you think that lady gave me this reliever, any kind of reliever, a kinetone or something like this? No, she did not. She suggested you have to wait until the next day, until Monday. Okay, so uh, that's my experience. I don't know what yours is, but uh, I believe that easily could match uh, a military torture uh, level uh, that I have experienced back in 2014 and due to uh, all the issues uh, Dr. Zoran Muja you can 100% expect uh, a police invitation court invitation I am going to ruin I'm going to whack your life I'm gonna make out of your life uh, what I'm gonna make out of your life you know what I'm gonna make out of your life I'm gonna make out of your life a cubicles you're not going to believe what I'm going to make out of your life because what you have done to me. Uh, you can call this a threat. You can call this whatever you want. It's going to be done through the legal channels, through the legal ways, but you can expect me. Uh, I am thinking about you night and day. Uh, and the same, likewise, goes to uh, Dr. Proksho and for the local police in our Mesto. Uh, this battle just started. This did not end. This just started. And I really don't care which way this is going to go. Uh, you all can expect me. Uh, I know that this was not about psychiatric drugs and stuff like this only. I precisely know that you have used other stuff as well. So you can bet, you can count on me. Uh, in Ljubljana Hospital, believe it or not, it's a university clinic. It's quite international, psychiatric hospital. I am laughing right now, but believe me, in me, everything is but uh, laughing. They know nothing about MK Ultra. They know nothing about MK Ultra. What MK Ultra is? In fact, I had to explain to Doctor Muja what MK Ultra is, just to be laughed at in return, in the face. Uh, and it was the same thing with other psychiatrists in this very hospital. None of the psychiatrists in this very hospital knows anything about what MK Ultra is. So it would be maybe nice if somebody would stop by, you know, at that hospital and maybe explain to them what MK Ultra is to the psychiatrist so they would know what MK Ultra is. Now, joke on the side, uh, all the rampage shootings that you see, the killings, the mass killings, everything that is happening right now in the U.S. as you can see and it, it happened before uh, even an individual who was inside of the room with me that was supposedly a roommate that should be in a forensic department but was instead my instead my roommate uh, a roommate that cut his mama in pieces and stashed her inside of the fridge his name is a Vili by the way uh, even that individual I believe was a victim of MK Ultra and very 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 same psychiatrist that's Dr. Muja you Dr. Muja I know you watch this program so stay tuned you will get that police invitation court invitation one of these days now